Unless you've been living under a rock, you've probably heard that AI is getting very good at conversation. In fact, maybe you even chatted with one of these AIs through a chatbot interface like Google Bard. This is all thanks to a powerful kind of neural network called a large language model, or LLM. LLMs enable computers to understand and generate language better than ever before, unlocking a whole host of new applications. In this video, we're going to talk about what LLMs are and how anyone can get started building with them, whether you're a developer or not. Ready? Let's dive in. LLMs are machine learning models that are really good at understanding and generating human language. They're based on transformers, a type of neural network architecture invented by Google. Now, what made the transformer architecture so powerful was its ability to scale effectively, allowing us to train these models on massive text datasets. That's where the large and large language models comes from. Both the size and complexity of the neural network itself, as well as the size of the dataset that it was trained on. For some of these models, we're talking about trillions of tokens from a bunch of publicly available sources. And it wasn't until researchers started to make these models really large and train them on these huge data sets that they started showing these impressive results, like understanding complex nuanced language and generating language more eloquently than ever. If you're already familiar with machine learning, you probably think about training a model for a specific task, like, is this tweet positive or negative, or translate this text from French to English. But what makes LLMs especially powerful is that one model can be used for a whole variety of tasks, like chat, copywriting, translation, summarization, brainstorming, code generation, and a whole lot more. Best of all, you can prototype language applications incredibly fast with LLMs, in just minutes rather than months. And you don't have to be a machine learning expert to do it. All you really need to know is how to write. So how do you actually use an LLM? Well, let's take a look. LLMs learn about patterns and language from the massive amounts of text data they're trained on. Then they take as input some text and produce some output text that's likely to follow. Another way to say this is that LLMs are like really sophisticated autocomplete. So for example, if we give an LLM the input, it's raining cats and, it'll probably predict that dogs is the most likely word to follow. Now this might not seem that exciting, but we can actually use this autocomplete like functionality to solve tons of tasks just by writing strategic text input. For example, let's take Google's Palm LLM and input this sentence. I have two apples and I eat one. I'm left with... The Palm model outputs the answer one. In this way, we get the LLM to perform some simple math. Or take another example. Paris is to France as Tokyo is to... The Palm model outputs Japan, which tells us that the model can not only complete analogies, but it also has some world knowledge that it's learned from its training data. Though I should add the caveat that not all of the knowledge that the LLM outputs is necessarily factually accurate. Now, all of the text that we feed into an LLM as input is called a prompt. And it turns out there's this whole art known as prompt design, which is about figuring out how to write and format prompt text to get LLMs to do what you want. For example, one way to structure a prompt is as an instruction, like, write me a poem about Ada Lovelace and the style of Shakespeare. Or explain quantum physics to me like I'm five. Or generate a list of items I need for a camping trip to Yosemite National Park. This approach, using a single command to get an LLM to take on a behavior, is called zero-shot learning. But in addition to just providing an instruction, it can be helpful to show the model what you want by adding examples. This is called few-shot learning because we show the model a few examples. Like, here's a prompt for translating from English to French. First, we provide an instruction. Then we give some examples, establishing the text pattern. If we pass this prompt to an LLM like POM, we get back something like the following. The model did provide a French translation of lipstick, but you might notice that it went on to generate all these additional English-French translation pairs. This might seem a little unexpected, but the LLM is just completing the pattern that we gave it in the prompt. As another example, here's a few-shot prompt to convert Python code snippets to JavaScript. Our prompt starts with an instruction, then we have some examples, and finally the Python code we actually want converted. The very last part of this prompt is JavaScript colon because we want to nudge the model to output some JavaScript code just like this. Note that in a real application, we probably want to parameterize the input instead of hard coding it into the prompt. That way our users can provide the Python code that they want converted. And this is essentially how you would customize an LM for Python to JavaScript app. Now you might be wondering what the absolute best way to write a model prompt is. And if so, we got some bad news for you. 
There's currently no optimal way to write model prompts, and that's because the results we get are so highly dependent on the underlying model. Sometimes small changes in wording or even word order can improve the LLM's outputs in ways that are not always predictable. That's why it's always worth trying out lots of different structures and examples and formats and seeing what works best for your use case. There you have it. That's the magic of LLMs in a nutshell. You can check out Bard at bard.google.com and definitely let us know in the comments below what you're building with LLMs.